taking us on a trip down memory lane. My goodness. It is indeed about time for trends coming to you from the SABC headquarters in Auckland Park, Josie Maboning. Welcome. My name is Rafiel Wemwilwa and what an emotional and busy few days it's been with Musos from Africa descending upon Joburg for the show the spectacular that is the MTV Africa Music Awards. But also the reason we opened for that, we opened the show with that video, uh, the song by Monewa and Nakane Ture. Um, of course, because 10 years ago, the news of the passing on of trendsetter and star Lebo Matosa made headlines here in South Africa and the continent. One quarter of the groundbreaking boom shaka and discovered by the pioneering legends at Galawa Records at the tender age of 17, Lebo, Tembi, Theo and Junior burst onto the scene in 1993 to become icons like no other that came before them. The Guaito group changed the face of South African music industry and went on to gain international acclaim. But then, in 1999, despite the group's success, Lebo's solo career was born and a dream, also the title of her album, realized. But life and all its ways that we can never understand happened. And in October 2006, a car crash would dim the light on a rising star and it shook the entire nation. That was 10 years ago. She was 29 years old. And with everyone taking to social media and tributes still pouring in for Lebo, this is how we at Trends remember the songstress, Lebo the drama queen, Matosa. And the MTN Sama goes to People, are you ready? The drama queen, Lebo Matosa. MTN Sama, Yabonga Cool. I just want to thank my record company, my management company, Dreamcatcher, my publicist. Um, when she delivered her acceptance speech at the 2004 the Summer Awards, me, little did the fans know that, that this would be her last speech. Two years later, news of the Guaido star's passing shocked the nation, making headlines at her home and across the continent. Lebo Matosa died in a car accident when her driver lost control of the vehicle they were traveling in. I, got a, I remember I got a call uh, um, at 6 in the morning. Um, someone called and said, check the news. And the news, they hadn't announced, actually they hadn't announced the name. Um, they said um, uh, celebrity died, car crash, and so I got frustrated, wanting to know what happened. And this person was just crying, crying. I called Tembi. I remember Tembi was in Cape Town. She was also crying, saying, "No, no." She, that's the only thing she said. No, 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 Theo. I called the junior, and junior confirmed it. And I got. You know when you are numb and you, I got immediately shocked. I couldn't cry until I got to the house, got David Tone, and that's when the reality sunk in to say she is gone. And I lost it. I lost it. Sunday, the night off, it was early hours of the morning, and um, I got a call from the paramedics, so yeah. But when they had called, I just, I don't know, something in me knew that she had passed. So yeah, got a call from the paramedics and then um, they're out. <laughs> There's no, it's, you get, I don't, I can't, I can't explain it. You would agree with me when I say most people would remember Lebo Matosa as the life of a dull party. Her bubbly personality came out through her performances. But those who were close to her say when lights and cameras were off and the spotlight was not on her, she was a shy and giving person. Lebo was extremely shy. As a friend, we were friends. Before I got to manage Lebo, um, we met on a dance floor. We went to some party somewhere. I was at the party. She was dancing, I joined her, and that's how we met, and we, we became friends. Lebu was extremely ambitious, very clear about where she wanted to be. Then at the time, it was the Jenny Jackson and the Madonnas who were her kind of, this is where I like to, this way I like to go. Um, she was extremely ambitious, she was full of love, very affectionate. That's one thing every single friend that knows, everyone who knew Lebu is that she was very, very affectionate. She was actually very humble, and 
very sweet, you know, and funny enough, very shy. Lebo was very shy. She never portrayed that, but she was a very shy person, you know, and um, she looked like she kind of tough. I think life made her tough and she behaved tough, but she was actually really very shy and, you know, and not really very tough, you know, in a sense, you know, if I can put it in, in that way. And these are some of the fond memories of the Kwaito star. We were very naughty. Naughty as kids. I put two memories that I always share with people. We once went into, we didn't have money, we were broke. We once went into a supermarket and we pretended to be pushing a trolley and loading groceries whilst eating a full chicken because we were hungry. And then after we finished the chicken, we left the trolley there. <laughs> no one can arrest us. No one knows what supermarket it is and Levu is not here. It wasn't me that took the chicken, it was Levu. She may have had a short music career, but Lebu Matosa lived her life to the fullest and achieved a lot in the music industry. She scooped numerous prestigious awards and also explored the international music scene by collaborating with international R&B artist Keith Sweat. Ten years has passed and her memory still lives on. Ooh, yeah, uh, ten years ago that was an amazing life, a trendsetter, a black girl who rocked. And right now I'm sitting with her other half, Sister Tembi, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's lovely Lebo. to have you here, but of course, um, not because of such a great, you know, th reason that you're sitting on our couch today. I mean, we're remembering Lebo, everyone has been taking to social media and posting and just every year in October, what goes on in your mind? <sighs> Every year in October, it just feels like it happened yesterday. It's been 10 years. Oh, time flies. I can't believe it's this long. But, uh, oh, her presence is strong. Yeah. It feels like she's yeah. still around. She always she's will She's with be. me every day. Yeah. Um, I'm sure even her fans, people that love her, loved her, they feel the same way. I mean, her music, um, she was way ahead of time. Yeah. I think everything she did, everything she has done, it's still relevant even today. And yeah. that's why people, we all find it hard to, to move on and to forget about her. I think she will never, ever leave our hearts, you know, yeah. um, our air, our energy. She'll always be there. Yeah. And I, even young people still look up to her, still find out who she is, who, who she was, the things that she did. And uh, I'm sure she's helping a lot of young people you know to start their own careers yeah yeah now definitely but talking about starting your careers we're right now seeing visuals of it's about time yeah that time <laughs> that time like what i mean it must be mind-blowing to be when you think that I my look gosh at it, I, you guys I, were teenagers we were and there was oscar hustling you guys into clubs in hillbro and wherever you guys are I'm playing telling you. but you're changing i mean much as you guys had the look of you know a pop star group that wasn't even you know popular uh, that's why i said you know before you guys there was nobody else Guaito came and then you guys were game changers but your words and your lyrics as well were things that made people think beyond just hey this is showbiz we're fun we're having you know a good time on stage yeah, yeah. how it came about mm. <laughs> is that the question yeah basically. the young mind i think when you're young fearless you know uh, you don't know better you don't know when something fails you don't know when you try something how it feels like when it doesn't work out yeah because you don't have a reference you yeah. don't have experience so when you're young a young mind just always willing to try out new things you know yeah. always try out to uh, willing to just explore if you know what i mean so yeah. Uh, for us, we had a lot of things going on around us, you know, uh, the change of SA, you know, democracy, uh, having a voice, expressing ourselves. Yeah. So uh, we were young and there were just a lot of, a lot of young people that wanted to say something and we were just one of those. Yeah. And we were surrounded by wise people. For instance, Junior, he was already from Prophets of the City, you know, the group mm. from, from Cape, Cape Town. Town. And they were also a very conscious group right. talking about real stuff, talking about politics, yeah. talk, talking about about things that people can relate yeah. uh, to and uh, with boom Shaka, it was the same as well that you know uh, we were talking to people and we were saying doing things that they always wanted to do right. meaning let right. it go yeah. and and just being free and yeah. just being able to breaking to be ground. yourself yeah. breaking grounds and it was yeah. also a special time you know the release of mandela the change in our country mm. and you have these young people that are just like is this the change we're going yeah yeah <laughs> 
it must be really, so I interesting can't really, when, yeah. when you look at you know of course when you guys started versus even now um but when you guys traveled overseas what are some of the fondest memories that you have of you and lebo i mean whether it was your first time on a plane or the biggest um you know hall that you guys performed in overseas and just people's reaction to you guys you know our first overseas experience was in denmark and Denmark is also a very interesting country. Yeah. A lot happens <laughs> there. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. we're just exposed to a whole lot sure. of things that they're kind of like, okay, is this what world it's about? Yeah. Uh, but we're also amazed by the, ma the multiracial. There was just a whole lot of colored kids around. Sure, <laughs> sure. A lot of, you know, white and yeah. black relationships, you know. It's so fun how we also saw uh, white ladies fighting yeah. for a black guy. For us, it was like, wow. is this okay. about? Yeah, Why can't yeah. we have the same yeah. thing at home? Back home. Back home. Yeah. And uh, just the freedom, how, how the, 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 the parents treated their, sure. their kids, just giving them freedom to do what, but still being there, like these are the rules. These are, but, uh, you know, um, I remember, that's the first thing that comes in my mind when it comes to uh, Denmark when we're performing on stage. We were just wild, man. We, had, we did things, and yeah. there was just a point where we were on stage, and Lebo fell. I think, oh, like, wow. just straight. She was straight like this, and yeah. she just went, boom. Back. Oh, and then she got up as if it was like a boom Part of the dance. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure she did that. Wow. And, like, and that's the thing. Girl, show must go on. I know that. Regardless you of whatever. Yourself, but the because show of you, must the show go on. must go on. My goodness. And it was the most amazing experience. Yeah. And we got to uh, share stage with amazing uh, African artists and. It was great. Fantastic. Sorry. And just, yeah, I just want to say now, um, uh, an album has been released with her tribute um, music. Yes. And, you know, this many years later, what is it that you want, you know, even youngsters to take away from lessons that you guys have learned? You're still here. You're still a performer. You're still doing fantastic in Thank every you. arena that you are in. You know, no, 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 you Thank are. You. you know, so what is it that you want them to remember about you as Tembi, Lebo and Boomshaka? The one thing that I would like the young people to remember or to know is it's important to, to do things for the right reasons, especially in this industry. If you want to be an artist, you want to be a performer, and the reason behind it is you want to be popular, then that's a bad reason. Yeah. Because uh, this industry is not for kids. Yeah. Yes, you're a kid, you want to be part of it, yeah. but you need to be strong. Sure. You need to be confident, you need to have a willpower yeah. and, and, and not be fragile. You sure. Yes, we are emotional people because yeah. we are creative, but, but at the same time, you really need to be tough. Fantastic. Yes, it looks great. Wonder how great you look. <laughs> Thank you. Everything Thank you. is together, yeah. yes, but there's still a lot of work that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. A lot of preparation, yeah. lines, everything that you need to be prepared, you need to be focused. And I don't think a lot of young people know that. They know that. They just see the end picture and they think, yeah. it's all I awesome. also want to be yeah. beautiful and they think it's easy. Yeah. But the one thing that Lebo taught me is like, Nana, mm. you must own your things. I'm not going to use things. the other yes. word. You know right. the word that we own? Yeah. You must own your... Sh sh own, yeah. it. Own, own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. And Jeez. that's the one thing that I've learned. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Timby. Awesome to have you here. You know, may Lebo's soul rest in musical heaven. And um, yeah, from one black girl who rocks. Uh, stay tuned. We're back after this Thank break. Thank you, Lebo. Hypertension is the condition where the blood pressure, the pressure in the blood vessels, it goes up. We often come out at the top of the ladder having the worst numbers. Uh, and I think that's because we almost have what I can call a perfect storm of high blood pressure risk factors. If you are diagnosed with hypertension, you just have to continue taking the medication for the rest of the life of life. Because we try and reintegrate them and we try and retrain their abilities to be part of social society. We do a lot of work trying to educate people, trying to encourage and motivate people to lead a healthy lifestyle. Uh, so what a healthy lifestyle means from a blood pressure point of view is obviously the more active you are uh, and uh, the better your heart is, the, better, the more fit your heart is and the better condition your blood vessels are. Catch Health Talk every Saturday from 9 to 10 with Dr. Silo Mutawo.
Welcome back. You're watching Trends. Now, thanks to the influx of Pan-African Musos in Johannesburg for the MTV Africa Music Awards, I have now in studio an artist whose debut single in 2010 became an international hit. It sold gold and platinum and reached the top 10 in several countries, followed by his debut album in 2011. Now, he's worked with the likes of Nicole Scherzinger, Akon, Pitbull, and goes by the name Mohombi. Hey, How are you, man? welcome. Thank you for this beautiful introduction. Great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. It's a pleasure. Jeez, man. MTV Africa is bringing you guys here. We are so happy. Absolutely. But for people who don't know who you are, tell us who's Mohombi. Well, I like to consider myself being 51% African. <laughs> yes, you yes, know, yes. My, my father That's, is from yeah. DRC, Congo. My yeah. mother is Swedish. Yeah. That makes African me an African royalty, Viking. by the way. Oh, wow. You said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well thank yeah. you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually very proud to, because like you said uh, earlier in my presentation, it's been a couple of years now that I'm touring around the world. Yeah whether it's from Tokyo to Alaska or from Stockholm to Joburg, uh, I'm on the road all the time. And I feel that I represent not only in my music, but yeah. also in my conversations with people sure. that I'm an ambassador for African music Fantastic. and African youth. And, and show my South African friends, my brothers and sisters, yeah. that as an African, you can make it on an international level. Yeah. Uh, this is not an American dream that we're talking about. We're yeah. talking about the African dream. Doing it, doing it. Best. Yes. That's fantastic, man. And I mean, you're, um, you were saying you, you've traveled all over the world and you've lived, you know, in different places and you basically have like the best of both worlds an appeal that's, you know, crossover, having worked with the kinds of people you've worked with too. So can people, you know, say what kind of genre that you do? Would you prefer to say you are, you know, this kind of artist versus you work with anybody and anybody? I just say that I do music for, for everyone, you yeah. know, and uh, if I need to give it a specific word, I like to kind of invent it myself and say, okay, well, I'm doing Afropop then, because right. that kind of defines who I am. Sure. I'm black and white, just like Obama, you know, <laughs> why not become an African, you know, a <laughs> musical president? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. And your origins, you started off in a hip-hop group with your brother. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So where's your brother now? His name is DJ? His name is Joe. DJ okay. O, you know. Okay, yeah, it's, okay. It's, it's so Joe, but it's spelled DJ O. He's actually in, in the green room watching me really? right now. Really? Okay. And uh, it's, it's still a family. Freestyled a little bit for us here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you know, know, it's still a family business. Yeah. Just that he was a smart one. He actually took the business part. You right. Know? And business he had that showbiz thing to say, hey, exactly. I'm not leaving the stage. I'm standing for the show. Yeah. He's standing for yeah. the business. Sure. What are you looking for? to seeing tonight have you attended some of the other mama awards uh, ceremonies actually uh, a couple of years back i was part of the first road to mama nice. uh, the very first one so yeah. this is a you know it's a nice story that kind of continues sure it's true that the past couple of years i spent a lot of time in the u.s and europe and asia yeah uh, but it feels like now i ne really need to kind of reconnect with my african uh, roots yeah uh, i've been doing it for the past three years sure. uh, my first ever show in drc you know coming back home yeah uh, it was at the stadium and it was That packed. must have been crazy. It was that the highlight of my like, life. Geez. It was actually, to be honest, yeah. it felt better than winning a Grammy in, sure, in, in, sure. in March because you're together to with your people. people. You're coming home to your people and they get people. you. They get you just beyond you know, the showbiz and the hype and you know, the blinged out sneakers. Yeah, I mean, they <laughs> get you. <laughs> when you have a French speaking country, yeah. you have 100,000 people singing yeah. in English, yeah. you're doing something right. Right. Fantastic. And what are you doing? Who are you working with next? When are we, you know, seeing another release or something from home? Well, I, I ha actually am doing a lot of different things. Mm. I'm actually started this African project where I'm going to reunite because uh, I believe in unity. Yeah. Uh, that's my number one motto. And um, with some uh, colleagues from Africa, nice. some big names uh, nice. and also some upcomers yeah. like Lumino, who's yeah. an artist that we are developing right now at our label called La Clique Music. It's all about developing and finding new talents, yeah. mainly African talents. And that's what I'm focusing on right now to kind of pass on the, the experiences, you know, of when course. I'm, I'm 30 years old today and I've been already sat down with guys like Quincy Jones, like Babyface. Oh my gosh. Creating no, I'm music. Because I'm a songwriter as well, with. you know. Take so me with. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to yeah. bring them yeah. here. Well, yes. We're bringing that's them the here. Thing. No, but yes. they're also recognizing that, you know, this is the place of origin. Definitely. Everything, be it fashion, be it swag, be it music. Absolutely. You know, the likes of Quincy Jones forever there's always been elements of African music in his work. Absolutely. Working with the, you know, legends like your Kaiser Selenia and, and, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, so I, I, I'm really uh, carrying my, my African roots with me mm. and I'm really happy to be, to be here with you guys today. And uh, like I said, I believe in African Unite. Fantastic. Thank you so very much, Mahombi. And you're going to perform for us a little bit later, right? I will for sure. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Pleasure Thank having you on Thanks. our seat. Thanks.
Now, a new South African art gallery has just opened in Germany dedicated to showing work by artists from South Africa and other places on the continent. It's part of a movement to change the perception of African art in Europe. Our guy Iris Spitzer reports from Berlin. When Johannesburg's Kalashnikov Art Gallery decided to open a second location, they didn't choose Cape Town as you might expect. They decided to go much further, to Berlin, Germany, one of the world's art capitals. We need to expose this culture that's happening in South Africa. And at this time, Africa is also becoming quite a, there's a renewed interest in art from the African continent. Europe represents a massive opportunity for African artists. Their works can often fetch higher prices here, and as a hub of the visual arts, the city provides a chance to engage with the larger art world. I think in the future you'll see a lot more South African galleries or galleries from the continent having a second or third branch in Europe because it's very important to make the connection to these markets and to get the whole world interested in what we're doing in Africa. Their first exhibition is called The Scramble for Africa and explores the continuing struggle for political influence in Africa by outside forces as well as cultural appropriation. One of the major challenges African artists face in Europe is breaking through stereotypes about the quality and scope of what is being produced on the continent. Mikhail Drexler has been collecting contemporary African art for decades since a chance visit to Kenya where he was impressed by both the quality and the political urgency he saw among artists there. Still, he says it is a long process to make people aware of regions that aren't necessarily on the global art circuit. People have gradually become more conscious of contemporary African art here, but it's still difficult for the work to be recognized. Perhaps by more artists coming here in person and having the physical space to interact with other artists and art buyers, their work can reach a whole new audience. Ira Spitzer, SABC News, Berlin. Now this week saw the crowning of a brand new Mrs. South Africa where Candace Abrahams, who is now the former Mrs. South Africa and current Mrs. World, handed over her title to her successor at Emperor's Palace at a shindig that was fit for every single queen who was there. Congratulations to Tlengiwe, the new Mrs. South Africa. A glittering grand finale, Miss South Africa 2017 has officially been crowned. Lingiwa Twala from the Northwest took the title as Miss South Africa 2017. She couldn't have been more thrilled. It feels absolutely incredible. This for me has been a dream come true. Um, you know, having my family around me, my husband supporting me and my children. Um, it's just incredible. You know, it hasn't sunk in. You know, it just happened. But I am just so grateful. You know, supporting cancer and really raising funds, continuing raising funds and awareness. And that's the reason why I entered this competition. Because it touched my heart. Because I lost my mom through cancer. So I wanted to give back. I wanted to do something instead of just sitting and not doing anything. Mrs. South Africa is a pageant open to married women between the ages of 20 and 25. This is more of an empowerment program rather than a pageant. We caught up with some of the judges before the show. A pageant like Mrs. South, Mrs. South Africa is so relevant today because when you look at the, the group of women, they are married, they have children, they are working mothers or they have their own businesses. They have a lot of experience in life. They are women that most other women can look to and say, but she is a role model, not because she is 21 and beautiful and perfect, as we all were when we were 21 and beautiful and perfect, but because that is who she chooses to be. She is active in her community, she makes a difference, she becomes involved in charitable events, she looks after herself, she's beautiful, um, she's kind and, and ladylike, and those are all admirable traits. The Mrs. South Africa pageant really is a pageant with a purpose. Every single woman that you are going to see on stage tonight truly is a wholesome human being. I'm not, I'm not talking about just being a mother or just being a woman, but a wholesome human being. Every single woman is doing something for the betterment of her life, but also the lives of others. And that's what I've enjoyed most about being a part of this campaign, is that women in this campaign are constantly paying it forward. They haven't just decided to get involved in, in, in charities just because they've become a part of the Mrs. South Africa campaign, no. They've been in involved in charities for a long, long time.
Candace Abrams graced the red carpet with her princesses. She told us a bit about her journey and the experience which she says has changed her life. You know, I've, I've always been passionate about giving back and I've always been passionate about young girls. So I will be starting my own grooming school for young girls, empowering them. And I've also started the Candace Abrams stationery drive where I travel around South Africa. Hopefully I can take it internationally, but I give kids that can't afford basic stationery and arts and craft packs. So just to spread that message that I'm a mom, I'm just wanting to make a difference and so can you. So I want to encourage other people and I think that's been my platform that I have a full heart. I just want to give love back and hopefully it can affect everyone. Mrs. South Africa 2017 will take the reins for the year to come and will also represent South Africa at Mrs. World 2017. Nice one. Congratulations to her again. Now, here is a call to all aspiring film buffs and entertainers to join the Golden Circle across Johannesburg this coming week, where from the 28th of October until the 5th of November, international film stars, directors, producers, film and TV industry leaders will come together to be a part of the inaugural Joburg Film Festival. I'm now in studio with Percy Mabandu, who's the media liaison of the festival, as well as producer Murobangawe of the opening night African premiere of the long-awaited Mandela's Gun. Welcome. Welcome to the studio, guys. Oh, Thank thanks you for having me. Fantastic to have you here. And Percy, I must start with you. I normally do ladies first, yeah. Maroba, but hold on. Hold on a little bit. It's not because so, I'm prettier, right? <laughs> no, Percy. I hope not. No, 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 <laughs> it's not. But yeah, so great, great festival lineup yeah. and even just everything we've read about it. It's amazing. Yeah. So why was there a need? I mean, we were saying a little bit earlier that um, we have DIFF already and there are, you know, smaller other film festivals, but why was there a need to have a Joburg Film Festival? Well, first of all, we have to understand the position of Johannesburg in the continent and in the world as the world-class African city of the future. Africa's leading economy, uh, where much of the GDP, I think 40% of the jo of Joburg's GDP comes from the creative industries. It makes sense to have a film platform, a film festival with international ambitions yeah. on the scale of Cannes, TIFF, and, and all the others. Mm. It, it makes sense that filmmaking in Johannesburg has to take full uh, you know, t come into fruition on its own and, sure. and, and be allowed to drive the economy sure. as it should. It's going to be an incredibly busy week. And uh, Moroba, Mandela's Gun, a film that for many years we've been hearing murmurs about, you know, this film that's going to be put together. And it's the very first time that we have a South African playing, you know, our beloved statesman, former statesman. And so tell us about what it is that, you know, this journey basically to get to opening night, the African premiere of Mandela's Gun. Um, it's been a very long and interesting journey, as you know, um, South Africa and I think the world at large has been waiting for this film for a while. Yeah. Um, we've been in production for just over four years, a bit longer for the director and sure. the UK producer. But the film started off quite small. It started off at Lily's Lee Farm with a hunt for the Makarov pistol that Mandela received sure. from Haile Selassie. Yeah. As we did more research, uncovered more information, we realized that this was a much bigger story right. than this weapon itself. Yes. So the journey took us across Africa. We filmed Mandela's Odyssey basically... Um, the steps that he followed, we went to Algeria, to Ethiopia, yeah. Tanzania, Botswana, and ultimately followed the journey of the gun until its burial at Lily's Leaf. And uh, as they say, you know, the, the gun hasn't been found. Like, it hasn't actually been unearthed. Nobody knows where it is. The gun hasn't been found, and yeah. I think that's, that's actually quite important. Yeah. When we were filming, we realized that this gun was actually a symbol of the revolution at large. Yeah. It's reputedly the first weapon of the armed struggle. So it gave us a platform to actually start to tell this great story. Right. And the fact that there have been so many attempt, attempts at digging for the gun yeah. and it hasn't been found, I think also has a lot of relevance today. It's kind of like tells us that let's, let's leave the weapons buried, let's yeah. leave the violence, let's in this new democracy find other ways of resolving our challenges in society. Fantastic. So I think it's, it's quite important that it hasn't been found. Geez, very interesting. And of course, Ethiopia being a place that, you know, Mandela also loved and just their history versus where Africa was at the time. You know, there's a lot of things that people will get and also, you know, connect certain other dots that, you know, um, all the other movies haven't really uh, brought to the fore. You know, um, Percy, I just want to now bring you in here and say what mm -hmm. other you know films because there are there's quite a, a few international films mm -hmm. uh, Nate Parker's film I understand yep. is also uh, is it a docu or a film feature it's a feature it's a feature right yep. um, you know that's also being uh, premiered here in Joburg and yep. what else you know the international we, films look I mean, who's going to be here 
This <laughs> is this is a very big film festival. We've yes. got sixty films, uh, over twenty venues in one city. Really? Right. Wow. Uh, we've got uh, lots of films that are coming in. Uh, from we've got film from Taiwan called The Assassin. We've got films coming from the U.S. We've got films from the continent. Uh, so it really is a an international film festival, you right. know, expertly curated by Pedro Pimenta, uh, who you know film lovers will know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got documentaries like um, Riyadh Desai's um, The Giant Is Falling, which yeah. is very highly charged political commentary on the sure. state of the ANC. Yeah. And of course, we have, you know, musically inspired films like uh, Mali Blues. Yeah. Uh, of course, Akin Omotoso and his latest know, Akanis, feature, Vaya. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, the, the ladies, Vaya. Stefina Zwane and Salamina with uh, their movie, uh, For Love and Quaito. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. There's a lot of films. Will there be any events happening surrounding the festival? That there'll be all sorts of parties. Okay. Um, there'll be, yeah, and of course, I mean, <laughs> but importantly, the film festival stands on three legs, right? Yeah. You have the Youth and Development uh, Program, which is about about training young people who want to be, you know, to enter the film industry after metric, yeah. uh, and we are doing that in partnership with National Broadcast Institute. And of course, we've got the industry program. That's where professionals will be exchanging insight about yeah. the film industry happening uh, in partnership with Discop Africa. Always uh, very important. Thank yeah. you so very much. We have unfortunately run out of time, but fantastic. Mandela's gun, congratulations. Percy to the rest of the team that's putting together the Joburg Film Festival, the annual, the inaugural one. The inaugural um, one. Yeah, that's going to be an annual thing from now on. All, I mean, we are just so happy to have all this film uh, in Joburg. We're going to see you there buying tickets with your friends, your aunt and the rest of the of family. Of course, and everybody watching. Watching yes, buy we, tickets for everybody and everybody and their cousin and their neighbors. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're back after this. Yo, what's up? This your boy A. Reese, man, talking about paradise. You know what it is, man. We'll be back right after the break, so please don't go anywhere. Kalahari Transportier Park is a large wildlife preserve and conservation area in southern Africa. Kalahari means place of thirst. The total area is 38,000 square kilometers. Approximately three quarters of the park lie in Botswana and one quarter in South Africa. South Africa embraced the concept of transportiers linking ecological reserves across national borders. On the 12th of May 2000, President Festus Mukhaye of Botswana and Thabo Mbeki of South Africa formally launched South Africa's first peace park. It has 200 species of birds, including vultures, mammalians such as black Kalahari lions and large heads of herbivores, namely eelans, springboks, blue wildebeest, and more. Welcome back. You're still watching Trends. Now, award-winning author Cynthia Jele will be part of a panel discussion at the Essence Festival, which will be held in Durban next month, to discuss the issues of literature across the continent of Africa. Now, her book, Happiness is a Four-Letter Word, won her recognition from Africa as a whole, and even more so when the book was adapted into a film that is still raking up good numbers in sales. Our producer, caught, our producer Olwetu caught up with her to pick, up, to pick her brains on the amazing year she's had and what else is next for Miss Cynthia Jele. Cynthia Jele is one of South Africa's renowned novelists. In 2010, she published a book, Happiness is a Four-Letter Word, which in 2011, it won her the Commonwealth Prize in the African region for best first book. This book was then adapted into a film and it became a success for her. So Cynthia, please tell us, how did your career in writing begin? I would say 
the writing happened by accident. Um, I was reading a lot. I've always been a reader. I guess even as a child, I've always been a reader. I used to read a lot of comics. Um, I remember in the Sunday Times magazine um, there was um, 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 comics. Yeah, there was Archie, Veronica, um, Kathy, all those comics. So I used to grow up reading and and, and loving. Um, but as I got older, I, I started reading books um, for for pleasure. I guess um, novels. Um, starting with you know the romance novels. So happiness is a volatile word. Was your first book? So yes, happiness it was my first book. I'd written before um, a, a, a guide called How to Be an Au Pair uh, and what to expect when you're an au pair. Because I'd spent um, in my early my early twenties in in the US as an au pair. So I guess that was my first attempt in writing. Uh, it was a very short guide which I self published um, on guiding other au pairs to become you know to expect and how to deal with different situations. From there, um, there were a few short stories, some which were published in, 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 in certain magazines. And then Happiness Years was my first full-length novel. And now, how is happiness a four-letter word? Um, is it in reference to love, perhaps, or something different? Good question. Um, you know, we struggle with the title, so this is me and my publisher. I had wanted to call um, call it differently. Uh, it had a different title, Chasing Pavements, and that came from the, the song um, by Adele. I loved I loved that song, and, and I thought it captured what I was trying to, to, you know, to articulate in the book, because you have these four ladies who possibly have everything, but they just not very happy um, and then um, the publisher came up with the title happiness is a four letter word and essentially what it means is um, we're all chasing different things and uh, your happiness and my happiness are, are completely different and and maybe that's okay um, and maybe that's okay because we're not the same is the book perhaps based on any personal experiences that you could encounter that you have encountered I mean uh, yes, I guess to some extent, although I couldn't be those four women at the same time and have lived all those experiences, um, there is a little bit of me, very little, um, but it's just based on observations, uh, some of the experiences of the people that I know, my friends, and just people in, in, in general, um, something that you read about, something that you read about on social media, uh, maybe see on TV or read about in newspapers, which is basically observations. So it's a combination of, of observation and lived experiences. Did you ever imagine that this book would be this successful and even be adapted into a film for that matter? What happened was in 2011, um, the book won um, a, a, another, a, another award by, uh, that was awarded by Mnet. Mnet used to have the uh, writing award and it won for the, under the film category, which means that it had the potential to, to be adapted into a film and luckily um, one of the judges in, in that year is a lady by the name of Bongi Wesilane who, who really absolutely fell in love with um, happiness is a four letter word and just said from then that she actually wanted to, to adapt the book and, and make it her first um, a major film and so she spent the, the, la, you know, the, 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 the next four years really fundraising to, to make it happen. When did you decide on changing the cover of the book and how was the initial cover? So the the, the, the the cover of the 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 book was changed after to you know to go with the film, and um, yeah, so I, I guess that that that's what happens <laughs> when um, books um, get adapted into films. They, they there's always a request. What is your message um, in relation to the book and life in general to young women out there? People should not be afraid to pursue to pursue their dreams. I mean, um, I was saying I, I, I'm not a trained writer, um, but I did write and, and I continue to write. You know, I'm training, I'm learning as I go. So people should not be afraid to pursue their dreams. And you must listen to that thing. We all have, you know, we all have that voice um, in us that tells us what we should be doing. And that was Cynthia Jalen talking to us about her book, Happiness is a four-letter word and her journey in life and also writing the book. You have seven new voice messages. First message. Jai, this ma. Paat a hart afval gehad en hy is in die hospital. Hy moet onmiddellik kom. Hy het my familie afgeskip die laaste tyd. Ze expireer, expireer, deadlines. 
so my totale verkrachting van my siel. Nie rarig jou sien nie. Is dit nie mooi nie? Ja, dit is. Jy is die girl en jy op die plesier maak. Wat? Kom maar! Dat is ek nie nou my julle hoogste pik heb. Ek kan my meisie wees. Ik wil hier met my ouwe zon kom. Klink onheil spellend. Niet eender, my pa is een bykie oor beskerm. And that is a bit of a trailer to a film that's coming up. It's called Entlik Nochel Weyer, based on a screenplay about Jay, a guy at a crossroads in his life when he meets a free spirit named Ali who would change his life forever, but in the most dramatic of ways. Now, this film is set for release on November the 4th and is loaded with a good balance of romance, comedy, suspense, tragedy, and so, so much charisma. With a seasoned cast of actors and crew, I now have in studio with me two of the lead actors, Andre Lotto and Ashman Martin. Hi, guys. Well, Welcome. Hi, thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, wow, nice. that's like a crisp looking, it really looks awesome. Congratulations on a film that you guys have been a part of that in two days ago was the premiere. And so tell us, what is it that people, what were reactions like? Well, the reactions, I mean, uh, people were really stunned, you know, because it, it, it's not the usual South African type of movie that you, you get. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's literally different types of um, I can almost say genres, genres yeah. uh, that you would get. You know, there's romance, there's comedy, there's drama, there's action. There's lots of drama. Lo always <laughs> drama. But it was, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, Everyone yeah. was really yeah. loving it. So yeah, people loved it. I mean, it's something different. And they said, a lot of people told me afterwards, it's about feeling. They felt and they, went, they were drawn into this journey that yep. the characters had. So sure. that for me, I was, I was happy with that. Sure. Yeah. And this is your first time, um, Andre, as a feature, as a lead. As a lead in a, in a feature, feature film. Yeah, my yeah. first one. So. so you're working with you know, Marissa Drummond as well, you know, great actress. And so tell us what you know, the chemistry was like between you guys. Had you met her before or was this your first time working we, together? We worked together before on okay. uh, Soap. Uh, okay. So we were working together for a year and our characters worked together a lot. So okay. we built a chemistry, we became friends um, and we trusted each other. So yeah. when we did the film, I was cast and then they asked me, um, what do I think about Marissa? And I was like, you know, the chemistry will just be brilliant. And yeah. I don't think it would have worked out like it did with any other actress. I mean, there's, sure. there's a lot of good actresses, but just yeah. because of the characters and the chemistry we had and yeah. the trust we had, uh, it was a phenomenal experience for That's me. That's fantastic. Yeah. Ashman, tell us about your, your guys' characters um, in the film. Well, you know, um, I portray uh, the character of Berger Masheko, yeah. and he's literally like Jay's best friend. Sure. And But he's like this weird guy, you know, he's very eccentric, <laughs> he's out there, um, but you, would, you wouldn't believe it because he is, he's in marketing, so he's just this weird little marketing guy, but very fun, loving, caring character. Yeah. Does he keep um, him sane, or is it the other way around. Jay. I think he keeps Jay sane. <laughs> I think he does. I think he does. Yeah. As a, yeah, he's yeah. the voice of reason <laughs> when all the drama is unfolding. And just, um, you know, uh, you're saying the, the, the cast as well, you're moving for other premieres to other places in the country. Tell yes. us about those. Cape uh, Town to, and... Yes, Cape Town. <coughs> we're going to the 27th. Okay. Correct. In Cape Town, Tiger Valley Mall. We're doing a premiere there. Um, and I think public is also invited. They buy yes. tickets. So, so that's always good. Everyone should come. Yeah, and yeah. a premiere like, like the, the Empress Palace premiere, yeah. the public were there. So it's, sure. it's nice to interact with them as well. Yeah. It's not just industry people because it's, it gives a different feel. Sure. And they enjoy it. Yeah. They enjoy just no, of course, a good night at the so film is always is. recommended. Yeah. You know, and we're just talking now you know, about the Joburg Film Festival about to take place. You guys are part of the film and television industry. Yes. And just you know, what does it mean for you to have platforms like this where you will be featured and you are now just attending not just as you know a consumer of films and television but as part of the people who make it all you know put it on yeah. to our screens <laughs> now i think it's um uh, it's, uh, you know fantastic you know the platform because we've we've never really had it you know it's always internationally based stuff and i think this is fantastic to tell our stories um you know because it's it's so true and and for our people to relate to these amazing stories so yeah i think, I think we've got a, we've got brilliant filmmakers directors producers actors yeah i think time and money is restraining us um, yeah. but if we get that platforms and i've i've heard people say i've worked on a couple of international stuff and they say we we, we brilliant in what we do yeah. we just don't have the time and the money yeah um, but platforms like this i think our industry is growing 
together with the international industry. It's not just uh, uh, South African. In or isolation. I think it should be a global industry. Yeah, we should be course. part of a global industry. Yeah. Definitely so. And we have the quality and talent and brains to prove it all. Thank you so very much, guys. Pleasure having you here. Thank you, you so here. much for having us. It's coming out on the 4th of November. <laughs> This is Imperial Diana and you stay where you are. We'll be right back. Oh, they haven't. No, they haven't. You know what? Well, we wouldn't know. Firstly, we'll ask I can you. tell you. Why? Why? They say you're selling out. Why? Well, I guess that's a question you need to engage. Uh, uh, why would the African Union try and separate human rights and women's rights? Uh, women's rights are indeed human rights. So we need to be asking ourselves what kind of society are we? Um, what, what kind of, of, of family structures do we have where parents, where fathers turn on their daughters? If a policeman, uh, you know, is seen to be accessing psychological services, uh, couldn't that be seen as a sign of weakness? People are waiting for somebody to discover them. Absolutely. You know, and that's not everybody's story, am I right? Absolutely. There are so many of us who can be the best and stars, but you can't sit there and wait for somebody to say, I think what you're doing is the great. is so different to his past. I really wish I could say thanks to him. And mind you, I'm the man. I make coffee and I'm proud of it. For your daily dose of current affairs, tune in to the SABC News Channel. South African legendary dancer and choreographer Gregory Makoma has ignited a different kind of synergy into his latest production titled The Joys of Sharing by collaborating with Afrosoul musician Simpiwe Dana, the Grammy award-winning Voter Kellerman and his Vianney Dance Theatre group to fuse their artistic mediums all on one stage at the Lyric Theatre. Here's what you can expect to see. Joys of Sharing is basically a project that brings together music and dance. It's myself, Simpiwe Dana and Vota Kellerman. It's really artists who are at the peak of their careers. I'm not even sure where is the peak or really they've gone beyond the peak of their careers. But it's really it's a joyful meeting of um, artists who are incredible in their artistry, who have been consistent in their work and we just wanted to have this platform where we can be on the same stage and share and also inspire each other. Three of South Africa's leading creative minds all on one stage to create a synergy between music and dance, a principle that Gregory Mangoma always plays around with. very keen to work with him and then he, he phoned me and said um, apparently he was impressed with what I did as well and uh, so he phoned me and said why don't we do something together and um, you know Simpi we have always loved her music so she's just a lovely fit into this because um, Gregory's worked with her before and uh, I've always loved the music and it's nice to have the instrumental and vocal some balance there and then that balance with the dance is sort of a perfect combination. Music uh, is very much like going to church in a way. Uh, I've seen people 
cry big tears in the audience sometimes men too <laughs> um, and and my music lends itself a lot to um, you know um, it it penetrates people's emotional um, being um, and it I, I guess it can also make them very introspective and it and people connect with it on a on a on a deep um, emotional um, level which i'm quite happy about um, because of how i write the music and why i write the music these three mediums fused together is surely meant to leave you feeling joyful you know i think we miss a lot of love these days there's a lot of turmoil that we go through and we're singing about um, a love and memory and going through also you know a, a self-reflection and and absorbing the the moments in our lives and really creating new languages new music with all of that well it's a you know, we are 11 musicians on stage. You know, myself, my whole band, Simpiwe's band, plus a complete, a beautiful quartet that you can't actually believe your ears when you hear them sing. So it's 11 musicians plus 18 dancers. And it's very rarely that you can, that, you know, that we can actually find the budget to put something like that together. So it's not something you're gonna see uh, you know quite soon again it's a very rare occurrence and I think we've we've hit a sweet spot creatively so it's just worked so I, I think it's a really special thing it will take you places it will move you and it will uplift you I think for me um, the three really world renowned artists coming together to share their different experiences of art was absolutely beautiful and I know of course we know that uh, Simpiwe is incredibly sensational and I mean her vocals and her ability to connect with the soul was incredible um, and Vota I mean you know Grammy Award winner incredible artist so the combination of that together with uh, Vianney Dance Company and Gregory Mangoma was such a nice treat because we won't see three of the best people in the world like this, you know? Head out to the Lyric Theatre tonight and experience the joy. Nice one, Mr. Gregory Makoma, Simpiwe Dana and Voter Kellerman. Now, Ambitious Entertainment keeps on making hits and no doubt 2017 will be another award-packed year after Fifi Cooper and MT showed the industry flames with their great introductory albums. Now, home to other artists like Miss Prue DJ, who's behind the hit collabo, a many from the entire stable crew coming together on that song. It's now time for 19-year-old A. Reese to shine, who this week he dropped his much-anticipated debut piece of work and it's called paradise we caught up with him a day before the release of his album and this is what he had to say the one song i really love like i love like i really love I, I, sometimes i even wish it wasn't my song it'd be just the song that i had discovered on soundcloud or whatever is the first song on the album paradise <laughs> A day ahead of the drop of a project that will determine how you find your footing in the industry can be quite nerve-wracking. We found the 19-year-old rapper in the studio replaying the project and anticipating the drop of this debut album. It's a lot of emotions in one, you know. I feel excited, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm proud of myself, I'm happy, so yeah. Paradise, a title that expresses a defining moment and inspiration for the project. Initially, the, 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 uh, like the title came about when my older brother got shot. You know, back in the hood. So in my mind, I like I had already decided that if he dies and goes to paradise, I'm going with him. I didn't really care if that, like, that was the wrong thing to do or the right thing to do or if, you know. But I was like, if he goes to paradise, I'm going to paradise with him. Paradise is a lot of things for me, man. Paradise right now is us talking about the album before it drops because these are things that I had dreamed about back in high school. Like having an interview, you know, talking about my debut album and it's like, dang, 
you know, see myself on TV on a regular, like that's paradise for me, you know. What looks like a beginning from where we're standing feels like a full circle moment for him. I was talking to the homies, man. I feel like Paradise is not even my first album. It feels like it's my last. Like, it feels like it's going to be so big, I wouldn't even need to do music anymore. Fast forward a year later, the rapper's living the life that's got his day one fans reminiscent on the lyric. I'm very grateful for that. I do have fans. I'm confident about that. I do have fans, man. I do have people who actually listen to what I have to say on these songs, you know? And, but the fans that I love the most, though, are those that have been riding with me since, like, from the jump, like, from the first mixtape from 2014, you know? Not saying the fans that are appreciating me now, I appreciate them any less, nah. I'm just saying, though, like, those... Because they really touch your heart, you know, they like, oh, remember when the time you would say this, that, the third, look at you now, and it's like, damn. You know, I mean, there's, there's a song uh, on the Forever King mixtape, the first mixtape that I had put out. There's a song there where I go, started as a little kid, now I'm grown up, 16 with that little brush, saving up for that Rover C and pull a face when I roll up, give me two years and a good luck. Yo. And that was like 2013. And I got signed 2015, late 2015. It's your boy, baby. The Paradise album has works featuring artists from the Ambitious Entertainment staple. I have Amanda Black, the newest artist in Ambitious Entertainment. And then I have MT, of course, on the Kudin song. And then I have PJ, my older bro. I, I'm not about the, yo, because you hot right now, let's make a song so it could benefit you and me because this, that, the third, nah. I'm about genuity, I'm about like when we're in the studio and we genuinely feel like we're coming up with something and we're creating, let's do it. Here's what you can look forward to. We drop some more visuals, you know, drop a documentary, man, at least of how everything went down and how things are looking now, you know, stuff like that. But of course a tour has to happen. Nice. And the show, well, has come to an end. We're playing out with a performance representing the best of both worlds on African soil, but also in Europe. Mohombi is here about to do his thing. Join me again, Rafael Wemwilwa, next week. You're watching Trends. What's up, South Africa? Let's go! Rock you, rock you like a rodeo. It's gonna be a uh, That's right. I wanna boom bang bang with your body, oh. We gonna rock it up before we take it slow, girl. Let me rock you, rock you like a rodeo. Ha <laughs> ha. Mohambe, pull you over, pull you under, make your body surrender to mine. What? Girl, you can make me suffer, do whatever, 'cause I know you're one of.